No? So the last time I did this presentation, I've done it before, I talked about bees, and I could tell you loads of interesting stuff about how the carpenter bee has an intrinsic relationship with the harebell, and if either one of them dies, probably the other one will die in the UK, but ask me about that after. That was an easy presentation, because everyone loves bees, they've got a really good PR team. This time I'm going to talk about who's afraid of the big bad wolf. Um, I'll tell you a few people, Little Red Riding Hood is, her grandma, the three little pigs, the boy who cried wolf, many, many others. Don't even try and take me back to what time is it, Mr. Wolf, because that made me the sprinter that I am today. Here's a really quick example that I remember from my teenage years, hence the quality of the video. And I remember thinking, fuck being that guy. Um, but in hindsight, that isn't a pack of wolves, that's just a pack of wild dogs. But it's much easier to blame it on wolves because... They got really bad press. Um, the real story that I want to tell you about today is about how wolves served an ecosystem. So some of you might have already heard about Yellowstone, the world's first national park located in Northwest America. Hopefully you all haven't heard that story, otherwise this is just going to be like a repeat and I'm not sure it will urge as well as friends did. So in the early part of the 20th century, it killed off all the wolves in North, North America. The prey species grew in numbers, specifically the elk, which is what the Americans called deer. Not only did they grow in number, but the behaviour changed because there was a much lower threat from wolves, which led to chronic overbrowsing of the plants, prevented many trees from growing tall, which had huge knock-on effects. Humans attempted unsuccessfully to manage elk populations, and after 70 years of no wolves, finally in 1995, 14 wolves were reintroduced to Yellowstone using the Endangered Species Act, and no one quite expected how profound the impact was going to be. The instant effect was on the elk. So the behaviour cha uh, the behaviour changed. Rather than gathering in large herds, they gathered in lots of smaller herds. In an effort to evade the wolves, they could also no longer park up in areas where they could be easily trapped by the wolves. So it allowed those areas to regenerate really quickly, and the height of trees quintupled in six years. Why is more large trees good? Well, from a land point of view, it prevents erosion of the land, specifically on hillsides and by rivers. Often flooding occurs downstream of areas where riverside trees have been removed. Trees are nature's flood defence, so let's keep them. The animals also saw the benefit of trees, so with a huge increase in bird populations, both by rivers and across previously bare va valleys. Moose were also reliant on established tree growth, hence how happy that guy is. Um, but, but probably the ones that loved the trees the most, specifically the willow trees, were the beavers. So the beaver population had been suffering because of the overbrowsed willows. Now they had an abundance of trees for both food and dam building, and their numbers grew, and as a result, the waterways changed. So the waterways slowed down, they meandered less, there were more pools, all of which was brilliant for other wildlife, so like otters, muskrats, fish, reptiles, amphibians, ducks, and loads of other things. Is that all? No. The wolves reduced the coyote population, which had been growing to large numbers too. As a result, there was more availability of small mammals for such uh, predators such as hawks, weasels, foxes, badgers, and more. And that's a hawk and a weasel hanging out together, so that's cool, isn't it? Um, that must be it. No. The wolves all provided carrion in the form of elk carcasses, so these are essential for ravens, bald eagles, bears, beetles, 57 species of them, other insects and more. Before the wolves, this carrion was boom and bust based on how harsh the winter was. <clears throat> Sounds like a really bum deal for the elk, right? No, wrong again. Research has shown that by reducing populations and thinning out the weak and sick animals, the wolves had a role in creating really resilient elk herds, so the survivors are definitely happy, don't quote me, to have the wolves back. To recap, Yellowstone was struggling. Wolves returned and changed a massive variety of animal and plant populations, leading to a more robust and diverse ecosystem. The change was to such a degree that they actually changed the physical geography of the land. But they're still big, bad, and very dangerous. Or are they? Well, there's been no documented cases of human injuries in Yellowstone, with over 100 wolves and thousands of tourists. There are five documented deaths by non-captive wolves in North America in the last 100 years. That's one every 20 years. And that's all in the far snowy north where prey is scarce. I saw a recent comment from a photographer who'd been desperately trying to get a photograph of wolves in Yellowstone, and he says, but all too often they just stay far away as soon as they smell a human, meaning his shots were also always from a huge distance. He says you cannot get a close photo of them if you try. It is worth noting that they do sometimes prey on livestock, often when they travel alone, if the pack's been disrupted, or the young wolf looking for a mate. In mainland Europe, where wolves are present, they use guard dogs, donkeys, donkeys are really hard, and other protections, uh, along with compensation for livestock owners. Um, Wolves in Britain, uh, wolves were last of Britain's top predators to be hunted to extinction in the 18th century. They've been persecuted across Europe, surviving in a few isolated locations, such as Poland. They banned hunting in 1990, and the population's recovering well, spreading back towards Britain, as close as the Netherlands and France, but they cannot swim the channel. In Britain, like Yellowstone, we have a problem with chronic overbrowsing from numerous deer populations. They're preventing new tree growth and have re no reason to move on through lack of predation. Our forests are at risk of dying out which, as you've seen, will have a huge impact on thousands of species of flora and fauna. So, what am I asking you? 
It's asking you to consider supporting any campaign to reintroduce wolves in the UK. The stats show that the risk to you is negligible. The risk to our ecosystem, if we don't, is absolutely catastrophic. Plus, they're basically just big dogs, right?